Good morning, everybody. Today we are going to see the topic shortwave diathermy. Myself, Dr. Rishikesh Sadhav, Assistant Professor from the Patel College of Physiotherapy, Kolhapur. Okay. So today we are going to see the shortwave diathermy in a detailed manner. For that, initially we are going to uh, look for the learning objective for the students. So the aim is to brief students about the following. So there are the six points. First one, we'll be looking at the general principle of heat therapy. Okay. Second one is introduction to the short SWD, that is short wave diathermy, physiological and therapeutic effects of SWD, methods of application, indications and contraindications for the treatment, and the main important part is precaution and dangers during the treatment, okay? So, what will be the learning outcomes? Once we are done with the objectives of uh, SWD short of diathermy, so the outcomes, what uh, outcomes what will be helpful for the students are, again, they will be uh, knowing the general principles of heat therapy, physiological effects of the heat, methods of application, in indications and contraindications, and precautions and danger. Here, now SWD, uh, that, that's what is diathermy. Diathermy is a combination of two words, where di is a Greek word which means through, and thermy, that, uh, that you know is, is heat. So the heat which is given through a medium is called diathermy, okay? So that is, di is Greek word meaning through, and thermy is heat, okay? Now, where is diathermy commonly used? So, diathermy is commonly prescribed for muscular or joint pains, which causes deep heating to the body tissues, okay? What happens with the deep heating of uh, tissue, uh, body tissues is, it stimulates blood circulation, it relieves pain and it increases the rate of heating, okay? So, when you heat any muscles or the body tissue, it, uh, there are the nutritional uh, contents which increase to that area, plus due to heat, the pain gets relaxed, the inflammation come down, and the tissue starts healing, okay? Next. So, the principles of diathermy. Principles of diathermy, Diathermy is used, diathermy uses electrical current, okay, to produce heat deep inside the targeted tissue. Now what is targeted tissue? It's just like when you have, if a patient has a lower back pain, that is the targeted tissue. If a patient has a knee pain, that is the targeted tissue. Or if a patient has a frozen shoulder, that is shoulder pain. So you can give it to the shoulder, that is the targeted tissue. Here, now, the diathermy, what has been used through SWD, is a very deep penetrating heating modality. So, uh, it's like the heat of the machine reaches two inches deep to the skin surface. That deep it goes when you give the treatment for approximately like 10, 15 or 20 minutes according to the severity of the patient's condition. Now, diathermy machine, doesn't apply heat directly to the body. Instead, the current from the machine allows the body to generate heat within the tissue. That's very simple. So, diathermy, when you apply the uh, uh, diathermy pads, electrodes, to the patient, so that doesn't create heat, okay? The electrical thermal energy, what is there, that makes the body to generate the heat inside the body, which causes the treatment. Okay, so that is, uh, machine doesn't apply heat directly to the body. Instead, the current from the machine allows the body to generate heat within the tissue. Okay, so we are clear with the three principles of the di uh, diathermy. The next one is, as the heat increases in the muscle's tissues, it promotes blood flow. Definitely, when the uh, heat is, uh, when the muscle or uh, any tissue or joint starts getting heated, the blood flow to that area increases. Why? 
because there is vasodilation of the blood vessels. So the as the arteries and veins get dilated, the blood flow, pure blood flow with the oxygen and the nutrition uh, increases to the part and the after getting used over it with the beneficial purpose, the exudate, I mean the waste product is again it helps to remove from the targeted area which causes uh, which promotes blood flow okay that blood flow reduces pain okay and improves flexibility of the joint now how flexibility of the joint is increased it is like obviously when the heat is there the muscles get relaxed muscles elasticity and the tissues uh, natural uh, tenure gets uh, come back to come back to normal okay so that will reduce the pain and it will improve the flexibility okay next now coming up to the benefits of diathermy now diathermy it is intense it provides intense heat okay which uh, causes pain relief and better flexibility okay the next one okay it reduces inflammation 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 of the knee joint inflammation of the shoulder joint or it might be a back muscle spasm it reduces okay so as the heat increases it improves circulation to all these areas okay and due to that when blood circulation increases the more nutrition is taken to the targeted tissue and which accelerates healing of the tissue okay types of diathermy okay so that is there are different types of diathermy means the methods and the instruments through which we can give deep treating to the patient for the any disorder here that is short wave diathermy okay next is long wave diathermy third is microwave diathermy the fourth one is ultrasound therapy and the next one is laser therapy okay here now we will be uh, uh, talking in a detailed manner about short wave diathermy but there are another uh, these things cat categories where you have long wave diathermy and microwave diathermy these two uh, these things are not being in use as that much as short wave diathermy next one is ultrasound ultrasound therapy is also a very good uh, modality in physiotherapy which causes which helps uh, for treatment of any joint or muscle disorder okay in ultrasound you get high frequency inaudible sound waves through a probe where it uh, gives treatment when the uh, sound higher quality inaudible sound waves are coming out from the probe in an oscillatory manner okay so that is ultrasound therapy and that's the laser therapy sorry there's a spelling mistake in it that's the laser therapy so laser therapy as you everyone knows laser La treatment therapy is treatment so uh, treatment with help of laser there are very advanced and very modern uh, laser instruments where you can treat all kind of muscle back pains or OAD, rheumatoid arthritis, osteoarthritis, frozen shoulders, many conditions with a very good effect in a short duration with the laser therapy. Okay, next. Okay, now we'll be talking about, as I said, short wave diathermy. Short wave diathermy, SWD, it's a short form, is a machine which converts electromagnetic energy into thermal energy as i said this machine when a patient is placed on a pads okay that pads generates electromagnetic energy okay and the body generates heat with that electric energy so it's mentioned machine converts electromagnetic energy into thermal energy you're getting it okay so there are patterns of heat, the pattern of heat, 
there is certain pattern when you place the electrodes for the treatment purpose. There are certain patterns which uh, a pattern of heat which depends upon. These are the main uh, factors which help which uh, help for the treatment purpose. Okay, so the most most important thing is the frequency of the waves. What will be there for the treatment? Okay, that is frequency used. Hmm? Then the type of SW unit. There are different makes. There are different uh, manufacturers. So that uh, the structure of the machine, SW machine, differs from make to make. Okay. So the type of SW unit. One. Then the another main important factor when you give it uh, to the uh, this thing is uh, water content of the tissue. If the tissue, that is the muscle, if it's hydrated, if it's well hydrated, then the treatment what you are giving through the electrodes, electro pads, okay, uh, that will be very beneficial to the muscle to remove the exudate from the uh, targeted tissue or the muscle and also being hydrated, it will uh, get heat up, heated up in a bit faster way if the, the tissue or the muscle is dehydrated if it contains less amount of the water content then surely the patient will get a bit of uh, irritable sensation or burn or something okay then the frequency as i said the main part of swd is from 10 megahertz to 100 megahertz okay so this is the main thing is swd current frequency is 10 to 100 megahertz but most commonly uh, the used frequency is only that is 27.12 megahertz. Okay, so that is the frequency which is used to treat the patient on SWD, that is short wave diathermy. Okay, that's the SWD machine. Okay, now I'm going to explain you the SWD machine. Here, if you see the red switch that is the main switch okay you have to on it next you have to check the cables these are the cables attached to the machine now what you see over here this part are the this these are the electrodes okay these electrodes are used mainly to treat the uneven uh, surfaces over the body or the joint for example you can place if you're having a shoulder pain okay a frozen shoulder or something so these electrodes can be used you should keep the shoulder and the electrodes in front of each other okay so that is these electrodes are used now this is connected with the wire to the machine okay the patient will be sitting in a chair comfortably with the upright back okay and you should apply a basic the most important thing is you have to apply a towel over the patient's treated, treated, uh, treatment area and then you have to apply the electrodes with a equal distance on both the sides. Okay, that is uh, the preparation of the uh, machine and the patient. Now, as I said, that's the main switch. Okay, you have to on it. After that, this, the small switch, you can see over here, is a timer. Now, timer, why the timer? It is very important. The treatment of SWD as it is a very new treating modality, it should not be given over a certain period of time, which although if it's given, then it will cause serious side effects and burns to the patient. Okay? So timing should be adjusted as per the protocol. Okay? So minimum is 10 minutes, uh, 15 minutes, according to me is fairly uh, proper time for the treatment 20 is very uh, higher on a, is on a higher side you should avoid giving it to the 20 minutes maximum oh, that's the max treatment time so 10 to 15 is a ideal time for treatment given treatment with SWD now this is the timer you have to set the timer okay so now this are the frequency buttons okay the power and the frequency so it's up to zero this is to zero now you have to turn it one two and three same thing over here 
one, two, and three. The maximum uh, power over this is five. So you can keep the fifty percent of the power. That is up to the three mark. Okay, that is three. Now this, the button in the middle, this grey button, which is shown in a different color, is uh, to make it uh, identical from the other buttons. That is the tuning button. Now, what is tuning? Over here, you can see this uh, black area. Over this, these are the uh, meter gauge. Okay, where you have to tune the machine to the maximum. Okay, to produce uh, heat in a, a very better and efficient way. Okay, if you don't tune the machine during the treatment, the patient won't be getting a proper heat. If proper heat is not applied, a proper treatment won't be given. So, by this you have to tune the uh, this thing intensity to the maximum. Okay. So when you apply the machine, after like three to four minutes or five minutes, depends on it varies from patient to patient. So it depends on the patient's ability. Uh, patient will feel a bit of more heat if it feels than the intensity and this. Uh, the power button should be reduced to two or one as per the patient's convenience. Do not keep it in the same intensity. Definitely, you will cause a burn to the patient. Okay, reduce it to the one, reduce it to two, even this one to the two. And again, that time you have to tune in with the tuning button to the maximum. What it shows you the deflection. Okay, fine, you got it. So this is what you have to. Do. This is the way you use. SWD machine, okay, and yeah, you can see this, okay. These are different types of. Uh, this is uh, these are the pads, okay, where it is insulated inside, and there is a cloth over it. The cable is attached, okay. So this is the one technique, and this is the other one. As I said, if you have a knee pain. Then arthritis, osteoarthritis, rheumatoid arthritis, or if I have a knee injury, a spasm or something, so you have to use these pole electrodes where a distance is kept, but a towel is not shown on this area to take a picture. You should apply a towel over it and then give the treatment. Okay. Okay. As I said, as I have sh showed the picture, this is according to that types of electrodes. Okay. There are flexible pads, which when we saw the blue one, that those are the flexible pads. Okay, the space electrodes. Okay, what we saw, which is applied to the knee. Okay, the next coil or cable electrodes. This method is mostly uh, now outdated or it's not used as that much because these two uh, this thing methods or these two pads are more convenient and patient friendly. Okay. So these two uh, thing, uh, these two methods are used most commonly to have the treatment of SWD. Then again there is a so it's done monoid and type two. Okay, this these are again two methods. Uh, so these three one two and three are not used in today's this thing. Uh, only the flexible pad and space electrodes are used. So. Uh, when you, what are the methods of, you have seen, now we have seen the machine, okay, the electrodes to which we give the treatment, I have explained to you the working of the SWD machine. Now, uh, there are particular methods through which we can give the treatment. So that's co-planner, contra-planner, and crossfire. So co-planner is like uh, the pads, okay? The flexible pads are placed on the bed or over the patient in prone position. Most most preferably, uh, if it's over the, for example, the patient is having a back lower back pain, you have to apply the pads on the table equally with equal distance in it, okay? And then. You have to apply a towel over it, and then you have to make patient lie on the in a supine position, lie on the pads. Okay. Now, 
This is co planner. Auto planner is like when you have uh, you have pads and you don't have the space electrodes. It's like applying the pads over the knee for knee pain on both the sides. Okay, maybe la lateral and medial or anterior and posterior. Okay, that is contra plan. And a crossfire, crossfire technique we'll see it in the next slides. Okay, so these are the three methods where you can uh, give treatment to this co planner, contra planner, and crossfire method. Okay. Yeah, as I said, co planner pads are placed sideways to each other. Okay, then for deep breathing effects, both pads are kept at a uh, more distance. For superficial effect, pads are placed to the nearby each other. Now, this is what the uh, physiotherapist role comes in. Okay, so you need to know whether uh, the muscle spasm or the muscle pain, what is there. Is it on in a superficial muscle or a deep muscle? For that, you need a proper examination of the patient. Okay, so if it's an if it's deep muscle pain, okay, or if it's a chronic pain, hmm? so you need to apply both the pads over a bit over the distance. It should not be near to each other. Okay, it should be at a greater distance. So what happens? The whole area. Suppose these are two pads. So this much area over your back, okay, gets the electromagnetic heating through the pads. So it goes deep into the muscle, deep into the tissue, okay. So if you reduce the distance, the targeted area is reduced. The current will be only into the pads nearby to each other. So you increase the distance, you increase the heating, the depth of the heating. You reduce the distance. You reduce depth of the heating. Okay, so that is uh, both pads, more distance for deep heating, superficial heating. The clear pads are placed each other. Crossfire method. So crossfire method is mostly used for the conditions like when you have a sinusitis uh, or so, something kind like that. So crossfire method is used for uh, this kind of uh, some disorders. Okay, now. Coming to the physiological effects, okay. What exactly happens? Definitely, when you are uh, treating with such a deep treating modality, okay, there will be physiological changes in the patient's body, okay. That you should know in a very proper manner. Then only you will be able to give the treatment with the help of SWE. So, what happens? It increases the metabolism. What is metabolism? Definitely, when heat is increased, blood flow increases removes the exudate, uh, uh, relaxes the muscle. So this is what the internal changes are going in the body when the heat is going into the deep into the muscle and tissues. Okay? So increases metabolism, kidney tissue, as well as it raises chemical changes. Now this is what is chemical changes. What is chemical change? Okay, so that is, that causes increase of O2, and nutrition flow. Definitely, as I have mentioned earlier, when the heating is done, the vasodilation of the arteries and veins happen, okay, and due to which more of oxygen and nutrition is flowed into the targeted tissue and it's being used by the cells and all the muscles and the exudate, that is the waste product, is removed from the body, okay. The lymphatic drainage is the most important part to remove the exudate from the body, okay? So that's what is, uh, this is increased O2 and nutritional flow, okay? Next, with increased metabolism, there is increased output of waste product, as I have mentioned, okay? When good things come in, the bad thing has to go out, that is the waste products, okay? So it is uh, washed out with the help of lymphatic drainages, okay? And to the blood, okay, into your blood. Now, increased blood flow, okay, increased blood flow, that the direct effect of heat on blood vessels is vasodilatation. What is vasodilatation? Vasodilatation is increases in the size of the veins and arteries, okay, due to which it causes uh, more of blood flow and nutrition to the 
body part where the heating is going on. Okay. Now, heat causes stimulation of superficial nerve endings, causing reflex dilatation of the artery. Artery also, as I mentioned, even the nerves get nerve endings. Okay, where they go into the the nerves when they go into the muscle and uh, give the uh, where they inserted. Okay, they also get stimulated with the deep heating and causes reflex dilatation of arteries. Okay, that is now what happens. Obviously, when you give heat to heat to anything, the temperature is going to rise. So, general rise in temperature. What will happen with the general rise in temperature is heat causes muscle relaxation definitely. When you are getting some kind of heat, when you take, for example, uh, apart from as already when you say, when you go to the gym, uh, when you finish with the gym and all, you go and have a some steam bath. Okay, so what happens? Your whole body gets relaxed. Why? Because the whole body gets uh, muscles get relaxed, the skin gets refreshed where well, the waste products is thrown out to the sweat glands, okay, and the vasodilatation, the arteries and the veins get dilated, and there's a lot of blood exchange, oxygen and nutrition to the whole body. So that happens when you go for a, a skin bath. But here, uh, what I'm talking about is the, the, through the treatment of SW, okay. So it causes muscle relaxation with the DPD, okay, because it's not just the superficial muscles. The heat goes up to the deep muscles also. Okay, so it causes complete relaxation of the muscles. Okay, which in turn causes increased muscle efficiency. Definitely, that's a very basic thing. So when you the heat is gone up to the uh, muscles in a, in in the deeper muscles, okay, it gets relaxed and definitely the natural uh, texture of the muscle uh, it helps to come back. Okay, so. Its efficiency, its elasticity, its natural movements get, starts regaining with the help of heating of SW. Okay, so that is what, which in turn causes increased muscle efficiency. Got it? So that is now flow in the blood pressure. As I said, there is heat reduces peripheral resistance of the blood flow. Definitely, the peripheral. Uh, Vasodilatation is there, so heat reduces peripheral resistance of the blood flow. Heat also causes reduction in the viscosity of the blood, which helps in reduction of blood pressure. Definitely, when there is vasodilatation, okay, the same time the blood which is flowing all over the body through this, uh, uh, all the arteries and veins, okay, the due to heating, its viscosity, its thickness, viscosity is thickness of the blood gets. Lesser, that is, the blood can flow more easily through the body. Okay, so that causes reduction in blood pressure. Okay, so that helps, but it is again uh, a point to mention: the treatment should not exceed about 10 to 15 minutes. Okay, initially for the uh, for the first one or two days, keep it to 10 minutes itself, and then gradually when the patient gets accommodated, acclimatized with the machine, then you can increase the treatment time to 15 minutes. Okay, so the fall in blood pressure, what we are seeing, reduction in blood pressure due to the uh, reduction in viscosity of the blood. Okay, now going to the next slide. Increased activation of the sweat glands, as I mentioned uh, for this steam bath. Okay where you get all over the sweat all over your body. Same thing happens with uh, this uh, SWD, okay? General activation of heat in tissue causes increased activity of sweat glands, definitely. As, as I said, when a good thing gets flowed to the uh, muscles and the tissue, that is, Oxygen and nutrition. Yes, uh, the oxygen, what is being used, gets converted to CO2 and it has to be carried back. And other exudate, what is being, uh, is going to get, uh, going to get accumulated there, has to drain out. So that comes out with the help of lymphatic finish. And other is due to sweat gland. As you heat the area, definitely that area is going to sweat. 
Okay, sweat glands removes the waste products along with it. Okay, so that is general activation of heat in tissues causes increased activity of sweat glands. Now, what happens? Now, as I said, which helps in removal of waste products from the body. Okay, uh, how does the waste products removed? Is to the sweat glands, to the lymphatic drainage. Okay, got it. Now. Therapeutic effects, that is, now what happens, now we have seen the physio physiological effects, okay, now we are going to therapeutic effect effects, so therapeutic effects, what happens is, it reduces inflammation, okay, inflammation over your knee joint, inflammation over your shoulder joint, or the spasm of the, over your low back, upper back, whatever it is, okay, Due to the DPT modality, okay, the time period what is required for healing naturally is reduced. So it reduces the healing time. The patient gets healed in a lesser time than it is required. Okay. Again, therapeutic use, relief of pain due to the healing of the uh, targeted tissue or the muscle, the pain over that area is reduced. It gives a radio effect. Now, what is sedative effect? Here, yeah, this is very important. Okay, we have to take care of this. It, it's uh, a good part, uh, our part, and also it's a bad, not exactly bad, but you have to be cautious when you give it to the patient. Now, sedative. When you apply the heat, if you're giving, uh, for example, a co method on SWD to the lower back, okay, you apply it for 15 minutes, okay, it starts within a uh, seconds, it starts heating. Okay. So once the heat starts, patient gets relaxed, starts getting relaxed. As the blood flow increases, oxygen increases, nutrition increases, and the muscle starts getting relaxed. Okay. So that's, that causes relaxation of the muscle. That gives the sedative effect. There are many people who start snoring after five to seven minutes of SWD. So you have to be careful in other way that if patient sleeps, okay, and if he doesn't feel the heat, it might cause burn. Okay, that might damage the skin and the muscle because that is very a product that will be very problematic. So, so the sedative effect, what I'm saying, is a good part. Okay, for the relaxation purpose, but you have to be aware while if patient sleeps over the treatment part during the treatment time. Okay, removal of waste product, as I said, it removes waste products through sweat glands and through lymphatic drainage. When the oxygen supply increases and nutritional supply increases to the targeted area. Again, this sedative effect and muscle relaxation both are interconnected. Okay? So when muscle relaxation starts, okay, it starts giving you this thing, sedative effect. Okay? The next relief of muscle pulse, obviously, as I said, there is as the muscle starts getting relaxed, it's passing. Maybe it is a superficial muscle or a deep muscle. It starts getting relaxed. So it relieves the spasm also. Okay? So what we have covered, uh, seen in therapeutic effects is reduces the inflammation, the healing time also is there, relief of pain, sedative effect, removal of waste product, okay, muscle relaxation and relief of muscle spasm. Okay. Okay, now uses. Where can we as to be used, okay? Which conditions can give to a very good effect? See, it is not applicable for, uh, applicable for each and everything, but there are a few conditions which gives, there are a few common conditions, I would say, which gives you a pro very nice effect if you treat it in a very proper duration, with proper duration and intensity, okay? So that is, uh, we are going to look for musculoskeletal disorders. Okay, what is musculoskeletal? Obviously, the, the conditions that are related to your muscles and joints. That is musculoskeletal disorder. Yes. Now, OA and RA. Very basic thing. Everyone must have heard of RA and OA. RA is rheumatoid arthritis. That is called as Sandiva. Okay. And OA, osteoarthritis. That is aging of your knee joint. This is common, most commonly after the age of 45, 50 years. Okay where your calcium and vitamin D gets reduced and your both the bones, the femur and the tibia, the gap between both the bones
start seducing and they start rubbing each other. That causes boring. Okay? So there is a lot of inflammation, there is a lot of swelling, most probably on the medial aspect of the knee. Okay? So for that, you SWD is very effective. Okay? You have to give the contour plan method most uh, effectively, applying a towel between them. So that is ONI. So this is sprain and strain. What is sprain and strain is? I mean, sprain, ankle sprain, okay? That is when you get twist, twist, uh, your ankle is twisted, that is sprain. Okay, you get a swelling over your ankle area, you won't be able to walk properly, your vision is limping. So at that moment, you have to use the space electrodes. Okay, so both electrodes where you can target the ankle joint very properly because ankle joint is very irregular. Okay, it's not in a even form. So you have to treat the space electrodes. So you can treat ankle strain with SWD very properly. Now, strain, muscle, muscle strain. Now, there are many, many, many conditions, for example, like uh, a sports injury. Okay, there's a muscle strain. Hmm? So where uh, the player, if he's playing a football and if he gets, gets a catch, then the muscle gets strained. Okay, so that also causes a sudden acute spasm of that muscle, okay, which has to be relieved. Initially, the icing and all things are, has to be done. That is the first thing, basic thing. After that, okay, you need to give him a heating modality where it starts uh, relaxing the muscle and spasm helps reduce the spasm. Okay, now hematoma, the fourth one. Okay. The muscle and tendon tear, definitely, as again, uh, coming back to sp sports injury, because this happens mostly in sports injuries, muscle tear, or probably like a person playing uh, covered with your coco, is running and has had a fall on the shoulder, so there is a tear or maybe like deltoid tear, subscapularis tear, supraspinatus tear, okay, for that, it, there is a pain over the shoulder area, and the movements are restricted, to avoid adhesions formation, and to keep the joint uh, basically in normal state with less spasm and pain, you need you can give SWD to the muscle and tendon tear. Tendon tear, like if it's complete, uh, we consider for the knee ACL. Okay, ACL tear. If it's a partial tear, then it's fine. We can keep uh, SWD and with the exercise we can treat it conservatively. Okay, but if the ACL tear, the ACL tear is complete tear. Okay. Complete care. That it definitely needs a surgical intervention, right? So surgical intervention it helps. So after the surgery, when there is uh, uh, when there is a tightness in the knee joint, okay. So SWD helps in relieving the tightness and increasing the knee flexion extension range of motion. Got it? So that is muscle tendon and tear and capsular reasons. As I said, capsular reasons. The rotator cuff tear, the capsular, uh, capsular tear, it might be due to anything, maybe a road traffic accident, maybe a sports injury, maybe a occupational hazard, okay? It can happen with anything, yeah? So that is capsular reasons. So all these conditions and many more can be, but these are the basic and common conditions, okay? So many more conditions in musculoskeletal disorders can be treated with SWD, okay? Now, what are the inflammatory conditions where you can uh, treat uh, with SWD? As boys, carbuncles, as I said, crossfire method, the method where you, know, you can treat the sinusitis, okay, over your uh, face, okay, and then the pelvic conditions. Yeah, pelvic conditions, your sacral pain, okay, or uh, maybe like uh, uh, something algebra. Yeah, now we have seen the physiological effects, we have seen the therapeutic effects, we have seen the benefits, okay, and uh, we have seen the indications, okay, right. Uh, now, the most unimportant part, you now, that now I have told you what, in which conditions we have to treat with, we can treat with SWD, okay, but now this is the most important thing. Uh, is what are the conditions where you should not be using SWD for the treatment purpose. For that, again I am saying it, when the patient comes to you, you should be uh, very much aware of his uh, history, past history, present history, 
Okay? This family is sweet. Okay? The patients, if whether he is diabetic, whether he has hypertension, whether he is on uh, blood thinning tablets, okay? You should be aware of that, whether the patient has gone through recent uh, this thing. Uh, so any heart surgeries, okay? Hmm? So all these conditions you have to get a proper uh, thorough assessment of the patient and then only you, uh, it will be very uh, effective from the point of view of therapist and also patient if he takes a proper treatment, okay? So the first indication, metal implants, definitely. If uh, there is, uh, so suppose, um, there's a yeah, patient has come to you with a knee pain, Okay, and uh, some previously, like one year, two years, four years, ten years, the patient has had a fracture, maybe a road traffic accident, maybe a fall or something, and there is a rod or plating done to his tibia and fibula, right? So you cannot be treating that patient for that same knee joint if that uh, uh, tibia and fibula, so the leg has, leg has uh, this thing metal implants, okay? Next is, again, metal jewelry. If there is a jewelry all over the patient, or female patient, or male patient, you have to tell them, you have to remove it, okay? You have to remove it, why? Because metal can get heated up if it's if it comes between the, uh, this electromagnetic field, okay? Or even it can be, in some conditions, it can give a shock current to the patient. So, you have to avoid Metal jewelry. So whenever the patient comes to treatment or the SRT, you have to tell them you have to remove all the jewelries, maybe rings, maybe the neck chain, maybe any points in his pockets, the keys, any metal thing, this belt, belt, this watch, okay, and a mobile phone too. It has to be kept aside during the treatment. It should not be near the patient. Okay? Cardiac pacemakers, definitely, as I said, cardiac conditions. Maybe it's a bypass surgery, recent, very recent. Bypass surgery, maybe uh, there is an uh, angioplasty then, okay? Angioplasty, or there are pacemakers. If the patient is uh, with a pacemaker and if you apply the SWD, the electromagnetic field are very high, very uh, intense, that would definitely damage the pacemaker and it will, really, uh, it will change the rhythm of the heart, which might cause a serious problem to the patient from the point of, uh, from the cardiac point of view. Okay, so if there is any uh, cardiac pacemaker, not allowed. Now we are done with metal implant, jewelry part, cardiac pacemaker. Now we are coming to the fourth point is peripheral vascular disease. Okay, now what is peripheral vascular disease? The vascular disease is like varicose veins, uh, more tortures by varicose veins, or some any skin conditions. Okay, where uh, heating can uh, cause. Uh, uh, some injuries to the skin and the uh, this thing, peripheral vascularity. Okay, so avoid peripheral patients with peripheral vascular disease. Again, this is the important part. Check in the female patients if the female is uh, on menstruation. Okay, if patient, uh, if the female patient is having menstrual periods, then you should not apply heat to the patient because it might cause severe blood flow, blood loss. Uh, for the female patient if she is in menstrual period. So avoid SWD during menstruation. Again, the same thing. Pregnancy, definitely. Come to pursue the patient, no, even though it's pregnancy, if it's a knee joint or a neck joint or shoulder joint, you should not be giving SWD to the pregnant lady, okay? That will definitely cause some serious issues with the pregnancy, okay? So avoid SWD during the pregnancy. If next, if patient has fever, should not be given. First of all, patient internal uh, metabolism is disturbed due to the high fever and all. And if you give uh, SWD, again there will be a big issue with that. Okay? Sensory loss. Now sensory loss. What is sensory loss? If, for example, patient is diabetic, diabetic neuropathy, where the skin sensations are reduced already, okay? So you should not be giving SWD to the patients who are uh, diabetic on a higher side, okay? You should check this very uh, firmly, okay? You should check the sensory integrated integration, okay? And then only you should uh, 
started the treatment. Next is cancer. Obviously, when the cancer patient is there, it must have gone through chemotherapy or radiation therapy. In these, uh, uh, these two conditions, SWD should not be given. Okay? Next is tumors. Again, if the patient has some reason, if it has a tumor over some area over the body, then it should not be, SWD should not be given. Okay? And unreliable patients. What is unreliable patient? Unreliable means the maybe like uh, small kids, okay? A small kids or patients who are not able to lie on bed for a, a 10 to 15 minutes of time period, that those patients can be unreliable, okay? So avoid such uh, patients for SWD treatment, okay? That was what we have seen today as SWD from a point of view where we have seen all the uh, therapeutic, uh, therapeutic effects, then we have seen the principles of the SWD, then we have seen the indications, contraindications, benefits of SWD, and we have explained the machine as well as the methods of treatment, what we are giving. Okay, questions? Thank you.